we have already seen what kind of approximations one can make to the equation of motion and equation of energy when these two equations are applied for the case where we have flow over a flat plate. So, which is uh, like flow parallel to a flat, flat plate and we know that uh, the two boundary layers hydrodynamic and the thermal boundary layer will grow on the plate whose thickness will slowly increase, increase with the actual distance x and inside the boundary layers the flow is going to be two dimensional outside of which the flow can be treated as one dimensional. So, we are going to start using the reduced form of these equations for the case of flow over a flat plate when the plate temperature and the temperature of the fluid which is approaching the plate are different. So, there would be simultaneous there would be heat transfer from the plate to the fluid as well as formation of a thermal and momentum boundary layers on top of the plate which within which most of the transport processes are going to be concentrated. Outside of the boundary layer there is going to be no exchange of either momentum or energy. So, it is extremely important the, the concept of boundary layer and the fact that all the transport processes are confined within a thin layer close to a surface is very important from an engineering standpoint. Because whatever we do we need to let us say we need to maximize heat transfer from a surface. So, our point of interest or rather our zone of interest will always be the region very close to the surface within the thermal boundary layer and we should make design modifications to ensure that we are going to get the maximum heat transfer from the surface by tweaking or by manipulating the flow conditions inside the thermal or the momentum boundary layer. So, um, we would we would first see the form of the equation which we have derived in the previous class. So, if you see what we have over here this is a flat plate which is placed parallel to the flow where the flow is uh, coming with a velocity equals to u infinity and uh, its temperature is at t infinity. So, these fluid when it comes in contact with the surface which is let us say at a temperature of T s there is going to be exchange of heat between the surface and the fluid. And this denotes the thermal boundary layer the edge of the thermal boundary layer. So, temperature changes from T s to T infinity within this thin boundary layer. For clarity this thickness is greatly exaggerated. So, therefore, the real thickness of a boundary layer would be very small of the order of millimeters and so it will lie very close to the solid surface, but it is shown like this over here. Initially the flow inside the boundary layer even though it is two dimensional it will remain laminar, but as we move more and more into the x direction after a certain point there is going to be turbulence present or the presence of turbulence inside the boundary layer cannot be neglected and this initiation of turbulence inside the boundary layer will change the thickness of the boundary layer in a more drastic fashion and in a more irregular pattern. So, what we have on the right hand side of this dotted line is the existence of turbulent flow in the boundary layer and the, the demarcation the artificial demarcation where it takes place it is denoted as x c or the transition or the transition length. So, beyond x c all the, the, the flow inside the boundary layer is treated as turbulent whereas, before or before the before this x c the flow inside the boundary layer is treated as laminar. As with the case of laminar and turbulent flow while flow is taking place through a pipe there is no distinct number that is change from laminar to turbulent is not sudden rather it is a gradu gradual process in which the, the, fl the fluctuations present inside the flow 
cannot be contained, cannot be dampened enough by viscous forces and therefore, they start to grow and create a turbulent condition. So, there is no magic number beyond which the flow is treated as laminar and before, before that the flow beyond which the flow is treated as turbulent. But for convenience as we have done for the case of pipe flow that is 2100 Reynolds number equals 2100 and beyond is taken to be turbulent flow. Similarly, for flow over a flat plate uh, flow over a flat plate when the flow is parallel to the flat plate the transition Reynolds number which beyond which the flow is, will be turbulent is taken to be as 5 into 10 to the power 5. So, the Reynolds number transition is taken to be equal to 5 into 10 to the power 5 in beyond which the beyond which the flow is going to be turbulent and this is defined as this Reynolds number is defined as. So, this is the velocity which is u infinity rho by mu where mu is the viscosity of the fluid and I have a length scale over here this length scale is taken as x. So, this is the length scale. So, the value of Reynolds number will be different at different points and when the Reynolds number transition exceeds 5 into 10 to the power Reynolds number exceeds 5 into 10 to the power 5 this x is going to be equal to x c. So, this when it is equal to 5 into 10 to the power 5 the flow is taken to be taken to be turbulent. So, the difference with the pipe flow Reynolds number is in the length scale. So, this x keeps on increasing. So, beyond a certain point we are going to get turbulent flow in the system. So, this is this is uh, this is universally accepted to be the value Reynolds number value and uh, before which it is laminar beyond which it is turbulent. So, if you look at these are the three equations which we have derived using the boundary layer approximations. So, this is equation of continuity, this is equation of motion, kinetic uh, equation of motion in the x component, this is the kinematic viscosity mu by rho and when you look at the energy equation it is also using boundary layer approximations and this alpha is the uh, thermal diffusivity which is denoted as k by rho C p. So, the presence of v x and v y the presence of v x and v y in the energy equation makes this equation coupled with the momentum equation the x component of momentum equation whereas, the absence of temperature in these two equations make them decoupled from the energy equation. So, there is a one way coupling between the energy between the momentum equation and the energy equation, but the reverse coupling the reverse is not true. This would be there would be a coupling as well if the parameter here the physical property mu and rho start to vary significantly with a change in temperature. If that does not happen if the mu and rho can be treated to be a constant within the temperature zone of our operation then there is going to be only one way coupling between the two. So, it is important that before we start even the before we even start thinking about the solution. So, thinking about solving this to obtain t as a function of x and y we need to first solve the these two equations which was uh, which was done in in your fluid mechanics class. So, I will very quickly briefly go through this without solving it. First of all the, these are two equations which will have to be solved simultaneously. So, the one way of uh, reducing the number of equations that we need to solve we can define a stream function as uh, v x to be equal to del psi by del y and uh, we can define uh, the other other one as uh, v y to be equal to del psi by del x. Okay. So, when we do that and since psi is an exact differential when we so that therefore, the order of the differentiation is unimportant. So, when we put this over here and this one over here the equation of continuity gets satisfied automatically. So, we do not need to solve equation of continuity separately if we define our velocity 
in terms of a stream function psi and utilizing the definition of v x and v y in terms of psi, we can see that this equation is automatically satisfied. So, we will just have this equation to, to solve. Now, this equation being a partial differential equation, it can be we can try to solve it using a method of combination of variables. So, what we what is done in the method of combination of variables is a new independent variable eta is defined which is for this specific case is defined as y times u by nu, u is the free stream velocity, nu is the kinematic viscosity, x and y are the independent variables. So, this eta contains both y and psi and when you evaluate this v x v x v y del v x del x del v y del y and del square v x by del y square in terms of eta, then something interesting would, 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 would automatically you can see and a dimensionless stream function which is f eta f as a function of eta is defined as psi by root over nu x u. So, these two are the definitions one is about a variable which is a combination variable of the independent two independent variables that appear in this equation and this is simply non dimensionalizing the stream function by this. So, therefore, utilizing these two our aim would be to express this equation not in terms of x y and v x or v y, but everything should be expressed in terms of eta where eta would become the new independent variable and f would become the new dependent variable. So, if we can do that, if we can show that f is a function of eta only which is which is from this equation, then the partial differential equation can be converted to an ordinary differential equation. So, that is the whole beauty of this approach where you combine two independent variables to a new independent variable and all these v x, v y v x v y del v x del x del v y del y etcetera are expressed in terms of f or its derivative. I will just sh show you one example and then we will present the solution. So, what is v x? v x is by definition of a stream function del psi by del y which would be del psi by del eta times del eta by del y and eta as I have said mentioned in the previous slide is y root over u by nu x. So, therefore, you can you can see that v x would be equal to nu x u d f d eta times root over u by nu x which is nothing but u times d f d eta. The point to note here is that f is a function of eta only. So, starting with del psi del eta del eta del psi, I am going to express this v x in terms of this. In a similar fashion that I am not going to write derive, one can write v y to be equal to half nu u by x eta times d f d eta minus f. So, this is the expression for v y. In a similar fashion, one can find out what is the expression for del v x del x, del v x del y and del square v x by del y square all the other terms present in the x component of the momentum equation. When you substitute all of this, this, this and the expressions for this in the equation, what you get is this equation. So, this becomes the new governing equation for flow inside the hydrodynamic boundary layer. What is, what is the advantage that we see that this is now an ordinary differential equation, this is now an ordinary differential equation which is nonlinear, but it can it can it we can possibly try to solve it using the methods using the 
new using the methods which are available to us and po the the best method to solve such an equation would probably be the numerical method so the all these vx voi etc are now expressed in terms of the dimensionless stream function f and the independent variables x and y are clubbed together in f so now let's see in order to solve this equation if you look at the solution we need to have three conditions three boundary conditions if we need to solve the equation so let's try to find out what are those boundary conditions so i have a plate and a flow is taking over flow is taking place over the plate so what are the conditions that you can see about vx and vy on the plate so on the plate means that is y equals 0 for any values of x for y equal to 0 and if you look at the expression for eta y equal to 0 stands for eta equals 0. So, what happens at y equals 0 on the plate both v x and v y would be equal to 0 due to the no slip condition. So, the no slip condition dictates that both v x and v y would be equal to 0. So, that is those are the two conditions what what one can write based on the location at y equals 0. Let us see what is going to happen on the outer edge of the other edge of the boundary layer which is the edge of the boundary layer beyond which the flow is one dimensional. What happens to the velocity of the velocity of the fluid the x component of the velocity of the fluid. The velocity of the fluid x component is 0 on the plate as we move away from the plate progressively the velocity in the x direction increases and from the edge of the boundary layer and beyond the velocity of in the x direction would be equal to the free stream velocity of the fluid which is coming towards the plate. So, the other condition could be that as y tends to infinity mathematically speaking the velocity in the x direction approaches that of the free stream velocity. So, those are the three conditions what happens at y equals 0 and what happens as y tends to infinity at y equals 0 no slip condition dictates that the velocity both components of velocity would be 0 and at as y tends to 0 at a point far from the solid plate the velocity of the fluid stream would be equal to the free stream velocity that means v x is simply going to be equal to u. These three bound are the boundary conditions physical boundary conditions which we need to express in terms of f and eta and try to solve the nonlinear ordinary differential equation that we have that we have obtained over here. So, I am going to write those, those boundary those equations over here first. So, for y equals 0 both v x and v y would be equal to 0. So, what is y equals 0? So, y equals 0 corresponds to if you see the definition of y definition of eta y equals 0 corresponds to eta equals 0. So, what is uh, v x? v x is u times f prime d f d eta d eta. So, it should give f prime to be equal to 0 which comes from v x to be equal to 0 and then comes v y to be equal to 0. We understand that from here f prime is 0. So, in order for v y to be 0 f must be 0 as well. So, the other condition is f prime and both f prime and f will be 0 since my velocity would be 0 at y equals 0. So, y equals 0 corresponds to eta equals 0, v x is 0 corresponds to f prime equal to 0, v y to be equal to 0 then it must be f has to be equal to 0. So, these are two boundary conditions which one can write and the second condition is as y tends to infinity v x would be equal to v x would be equal to the free stream velocity. <coughs> so, what is y equals tends to infinity? So, as y tends to infinity eta tends to infinity my v x is u v x is going to be equal to u which tells me that my f prime will be equal to 1. So, v x tends to u. So, therefore, f prime must be equal to 1 
as eta tends to infinity. So, these three are the boundary conditions that one needs to have in order to solve for this. So, I think the, the um, physical nature of the equation and the boundary conditions are very clear to you. Now, the next thing is even with these simplifications, even with the identification of the boundary conditions, an analytical solution for this equation is not possible. One has to resort to numerical solution of this equation and see what those results tell us to explain the flow and momentum transfer inside the hydrodynamic boundary layer. I am spending time on this because as we have seen without a knowledge of the hydrodynamics inside the boundary layer, one would not be able to solve the thermal boundary layer. So, let us quickly see how would a numerical solution, what I, I am going to give you just the table containing the values of eta and the values of f, f prime and so on and some of the values I will list. Those values would be sufficient to tell us, give us some idea of what is going to be the important parameters. For example, the thickness of the boundary layer or the shear stress coefficient for flow over a flat plate. If we can get these two informations, they would be, should be sufficient to correlate the results with those of the thermal boundary layer. So, let us look at the uh, how would the th result look like in the case of hydrodynamic boundary layer. So, the table that we have over here, this is from the numerical results. So, the first one is eta, which we know is defined as y root over u by nu x. The second one quantity is f, the third one is f prime and the fourth one is f double prime. So, at eta equals 0, at eta equals 0, we know that v x is equal to 0. So, f prime is 0 and f is also 0 from v y. So, both f prime f and f prime would be 0 and the numerical solution of the double derivative of f which is d 2 f d eta square, it is 0 0.332. So, there are several numbers which are listed over here. I will I will not write everything. What you what the interesting thing is when this eta is 5, the value of f is about 3.28329, the value of f double prime is 0 0.99155 in f, f single prime and f double prime is 0 0.01591. There are other numbers as well which I will not, I will not do not need right now. So, what is the significance of this table? This table which is obtained from the numerical solution of the governing equation using the boundary conditions that I have already discussed. So, from the table, it is clear that for eta equals 5, for eta equals 5, f prime is 0.99, f prime is equals 0.992. And what is f prime? If you again look at f prime, this f prime is v x by u which is f prime. So, v x by u is 0 0.992. What this uh, what that tells us this is interesting that means, for a value of eta equals 5, the value of v x by u or v x reaches 99 percent of the free stream velocity. So, which is unique because this tells us that at a value of eta equals 5, the velocity inside the boundary layer is almost equal to 99 and the definition, the working definition of boundary layer thickness is that point 
that point in y where the velocity reaches 99 percent of the free stream velocity. So, this point then refers to the age of the boundary layer. Now, if this is age of the boundary layer and if I since I know eta equals y root over u by x, then when I put the value of eta to be equal to 5 from here, this y must be equal to the delta which is the which is the local thickness of the boundary layer. So, this delta is a function of x as we move along the plate the value of delta will increase, but for a value of eta equals 5 then y must be equal to delta. So, when you reorganize this equation what you are going to get is a very Im important relation the delta the film thickness is going to be equal to 5 x by root over r e x where r e x is the local value of the Reynolds number defined as x v rho. So, this r e x is x u rho by mu local value of the Reynolds number and therefore, delta is going to be equal to 5 x by root over r e x. So, this gives you a compact expression for the thickness of the boundary layer at different axial locations. Now, this equation since we have assumed it is only laminar flow, this is valid for a Reynolds number transition Reynolds number of 5 into 10 to the power 5. So, as long as your Reynolds number is less than 5 into 10 to the power 5, the, the thickness of the boundary layer at any location, thickness of the hydrodynamic boundary layer at any location can be expressed by this formula. On a similar note, one can write the wall shear stress that is the shear stress felt by the wall by the plate over which this uh, flow is taking place. So, this is the shear stress felt by the solid surface as mu times del v x del y at y equals 0. So, this is the stress at y equals 0. So, that is why we have this subscript w signifying wall with tau. And this after a bit of simplification by converting this y to eta and so on this 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 is can be written as I am not writing all these steps in here as mu times u root over u by nu x d to f by d eta square at eta equals 0. So, the wall shear stress this is Newton's law of viscosity and then after converting the v x to f and y to eta this is the expression that you should get. So, the wall shear stress that is knowledge of wall shear stress therefore, requires the value of f double prime at eta equals 0. And from the table over here you know that what is the value of f double prime at eta equals 0. So, therefore, one can write tau w as 0.332 u by root over rho mu u by x or the expression of tau w to be equals 0.332 rho u square by root over r e x. So, this is another important result as it gives you the value of the wall shear stress for flow over for flow over a flat plate and a corollary of this is the wall shear stress coefficient which is expressed as C f which is defined as tau w by half rho u square which would be equal to 0.664 by root over r e x. Let us spend some more time on this wall shear stress coefficient. So, first of all why we would 
we would like to have the concept of wall shear. The wall shear essentially is the engineering parameter of interest because whenever you are trying to design something, whenever you are trying to evaluate the force exerted by a moving fluid on a stationary platform, you need to find out what is the wall shear stress. The wall shear stress then will have to be multiplied by the area in order to calculate the total force. So, therefore, shear stress plays a very important role. The wall shear stress plays a very important role in the design of the of a surface, evaluation of the force on a surface and so on. And they contain, they are a function of the local value of the Reynolds number, the properties of the liquid rho and mu and the imposed condition which is the velocity of the fluid which is flowing over the plate. And another engineering parameter of interest is wall shear stress coefficient which is expressed as wall shear divided by half rho u square which is also known as the dynamic pressure. So, the wall shear stress coefficient is a function is the ratio of the wall, wall shear by the dynamic pressure and which is ex, which can be obtained directly from this as 0.664 by root over r e x. I think this much of fluid mechanics should be sufficient for us to progress to find out what is uh, find out how to handle the heat transfer thermal boundary layer the heat transfer part of it. Since thermal and the, the fluid mechanics is linked to heat transfer by the appearance of velocities in the expressions. One first need to know what is the velocity, what are the components of velocity, what is the thickness of the boundary layer, what is the shear stress coefficient and then try to get into the thermal boundary layer in order to obtain the solution. So, what would be the equivalent one for the case for the case of uh, for the case of heat transfer? The CF in heat transfer is related is similar in concept to the heat transfer coefficient or the Nusselt number. So, our aim is to obtain Nusselt number. So, what we would do is based on the knowledge of the flow inside a inside the hydrodynamic boundary layer, we would convert this knowledge to our thermal boundary layer and try to derive the quantities which are of relevance in heat transfer, namely the temperature and the heat transfer coefficient. So, we are spending so much time on the fluid mechanics just to make sure that we understand the next step when we have to use these results in order to obtain the Nusselt number which we will do in the next class.